The Hershey RV Show in Hershey, Pennsylvania is one of the biggest RV shows in the country where you can get some amazing prices on an RV. And today we're about a month out from the show and we're gonna be giving you some of our tips and tricks to maximize your time at the show and if you're buying to get the best price possible. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. We're Will and Jen, and like Jen said, we are getting ramped up for the Hershey RV show. It is the biggest show in the country, and you can get some of the best units, the best prices there. Uh, it's just really a great time. It's one of my favorite shows, to be honest. Yeah. So we're gonna break it all down to you. There's so much that goes into this, and you can either go there and get a great price, have a great experience, or you can kind of have the opposite. And it's really just that knowledge going into it, and that's what we wanna bring you guys today. But we're gonna jump right into our tips for the Hershey show so that you guys can start planning, because like I said, it's about a month out. And you know, if you guys are really serious about going, maybe even like take some notes, jot some things down from the video um, so that you can start getting prepared. Yeah, so the good thing is that we're gonna break this down. Um, this video isn't just gonna be for like people who are there to buy because everybody has different goals and everybody's in different stages. But the planning phase is just, just as important as the whole uh, purchasing phase. So we're gonna break it down and really it's gonna be broken down into two things and what it, that's gonna be defined by what your intentions are. So are you there to, you have one goal to get in there, purchase the unit and um, the show's over for you? Or is your, are you in that research phase where you need to um, you know, break down a couple units, learn some more? Um, maybe you don't even know class A versus class C versus fifth wheel. So we're gonna break that all down to you. And that's really how the video is gonna be broken up. The quickest I think first will be for those who are looking and shopping, um, not ready to purchase I should say, but more in that research phase yeah, and learning just looking phase. around, trying to, to learn more yeah. and, and probably like narrow down what they want at some Exactly, point. yeah. And that's um, a good point. Really uh, step one is gonna be to narrow it down. And again, everybody's gonna be in different phases with this. Try to use the show as a time to narrow down what you're looking for. So if you're completely new to this and you're like, man, I just wanna get out and travel, but I don't know anything, take this time to learn what a class A, class B, class C is, fifth wheel versus travel trailer, and compare them all. Use that time, go into, I mean, there's gonna be thousands of units there. Go into multiples of each. Now you can always usually get like the same floor plan with different brands. So don't worry about like floor plans as much. Just see what you like, take a picture of that, do some research. So maybe you find that you like a front living fifth wheel, but it, further in your research you realize oh i don't really like this brand that i looked at that's okay because now you can look at other brands yes. at the front living fifth wheel and you'd be surprised guys like how many times people look at different types of rvs online and they think yeah. they want one thing and once they actually step foot in a unit which you'll get to do at the show yes. it completely changes like you actually get a perspective into the size of something exactly how how small it might feel or bigger it might feel um so i did the show is, is sometimes can like really change what people end up wanting oh yeah for sure you know everybody's gonna be in different stages so maybe it's not that basic for you maybe you're really trying to narrow it down between this brand and this brand or you know, class A versus class C, and that's totally fine. But again, make it that goal of getting in there to really just narrow it down, because this is your time to explore so many different units mm -hmm. without having a salesman following you around, without having to go from one dealership to the next. Yes. It's a really, really great time and tool to use this show um, for your shopping phase. Real quick before continuing, I wanna take a quick second to thank the sponsor of today's video, RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. We've owned our RV for almost a year now, and honestly, one of the biggest mistakes that we made was not getting a better mattress sooner. Most of the standard RV mattresses are cheap, thin, and super uncomfortable. And if you're like us and spending a lot of nights in your RV, you're gonna wanna upgrade that mattress. When we first used our fifth wheel, I knew right away that our mattress was gonna be a little rough. But we were hesitant to invest in a new expensive mattress at that time. Instead, I tried to wrap myself in as many pillows as possible to make it a little softer. Most mornings, I would still wake up pretty tired and a little sore. That's where RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding really saved the day for us. They make ultra luxurious mattresses perfect for RVers. And they have a variety of styles and sizes, plus they're at a really good price. We originally went with the Aurora Lux Hybrid Mattress in the soft firmness level. And at first, we felt like we were sleeping on a cloud. After sleeping on it for a couple months, we realized we made a little mistake. The soft mattress was honestly a little too soft for our liking. Luckily, RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding offers a 120 night sleep comfort trial. 
It's a completely risk-free option with free shipping on deliveries, exchanges, and returns. That's all there is to it. 120 nights, no drama, and no return fees. So we called our friends at RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding and they immediately sent us out a brand new medium firmness mattress. And this one has been so much better for us. This mattress also came in a little thinner, which actually made it easier for us to get the sheets on, climb into bed, and most importantly, for Tucker to be able to jump up on the bed. They also offer a 10 year warranty on every mattress, plus free shipping, and they're made right here in America. They deliver the mattress right to your door, and it comes shrink wrapped, so it's easy to get into your RV, and a little plus, it's so satisfying to watch it expand. So if you've been wanting to upgrade your RV mattress and get a better night's sleep on your camping trip, click on the link down below or scan this QR code and use promo code Will and Jen to get 20% off your next mattress. Thank you so much to Brooklyn Bedding for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to prepping for the Hershey show. So once you really narrow down like what your plan is for going there, like whether it's figuring out what type of RV you want, figuring out what brand or what floor plan or actually buying a unit. Um, no matter what you're doing, you're gonna wanna have a plan and, and you're really gonna wanna stick to it because you'll be surprised how quick a day goes by yes. at the show. And if you don't go in with a strategy and a plan, um, you'll kind of leave at the end of the day and be a little frustrated with how little you felt right. like you got done. So what you wanna do is, and obviously it's gonna be different depending on what your goal is for the show, but you know, say you're, you're trying to decide, you know that you want a motorhome, you don't want towables. First of all, the first thing should be, don't waste your time looking at towables. Yep. So, that so your strategy might be threefold so maybe first you're going to look at class a's versus class c's to figure out like what's going to work better for you and then maybe the, le the step two of your of your plan is to uh, figure out gas versus diesel and then step three maybe bunks versus no bunks if you have a family if you're trying to buy maybe that strategy involves more of like the interaction with your salesperson and the right. negotiation looking at, and we'll get into that stuff later but no matter what you're trying to do, come in with kind of like a step-by-step -step process of how, what your approach is gonna be at the show, how you're gonna spend your time, because otherwise the time will go by really fast and you might not accomplish what you came to the show to accomplish. Sit down with your family or, or you know your, your spouse if you're coming with them, figure out what's the plan gonna be and then kind of like schedule out your time for how you're gonna use it. And I know it's hard because when you go to the show, like you might be looking at, you know, class A's versus class C's and it might be like the cutest little teardrop, but just know that every time that you kind of have that shiny object yeah. syndrome for all these like cool looking units, that it takes cuts away more and more of your time for what you're really trying to do. And just know that, that those units will, will still be sitting there at the very end of the show. Maybe you finish what you came there to yeah. do early and then you can look at that stuff, but That's make sure, point. yeah, make sure you prioritize like what you really came to do. Exactly. All right, the last point that we're gonna talk about in the looking phase is just basically planning your day. So I highly recommend when you're looking and you're in the research phase to plan for really, you know, at least three days, I would say, yeah. give or take, depending on your personal situation. But it's so easy to get overwhelmed when you're in that research phase and you have so much to look at, so much to get done. And really you don't want, you want to maximize your day, but you don't want to maximize your day in the aspect that the show starts at nine and ends at eight and you want to be there the whole time. I mean, honestly, I think, and you would probably agree, you could probably get more done in four or five hours of really concentrated yeah. time than you can spending the whole day and then doing that multiple days back to back so that you can go home and try to absorb that information, research, talk through it and really come back and, you know, tune that plan up a little bit. Yeah. And along those same lines, Keep in mind that um, weekend days tend to be busier, but last year was the exception. So don't say you have to go during the week when you're just looking because you want to avoid the crowds. Because I think last year, if I remember correctly, there were more people during the week than on the weekends. So we were we were there last year at the show. We had a tent set up and we were there all week. Yep. And I noticed that the weekends actually seem to be slower. Yeah. So keep in mind, if you're trying to avoid the crowds, you might want to actually plan to go on the weekend, especially a Sunday, I think was like the slowest day. Because you have to remember, you have a lot of retired people that yep. are looking at RVs, so they don't, they, they're they not restricted by the work week. But you also have a lot of people that are working remotely now and have like more flexible schedules. So everyone's having that mindset of like, I'm going to go during the week. Yeah. And it actually, ends up being almost you know it does, like, it, like like yeah you almost want to go during the weekend now. yeah um and you know obviously you might want you might still be coming during the week if you're coming for multiple days but if you are one of those where you're like you just want to come by one day mm -hmm. and and check it out maybe maybe play for sunday honestly. yeah yeah 
And then one quick last point about like timing of when you're coming to the show. I would definitely recommend trying to get there early, like whatever day you come, get there earlier in the day, right when they open. You'll get a line accumulating um, for, for, you know, people trying to get into the show. Um, a little insider tip too, if it's the same as last year, there are two entrances into the show. There's a main entrance that everybody goes to, but there's also one on the side. And if you park in the in the parking lot at the Giant Center and you can and you get a, um, a golf cart ride, you can probably get a ride over to the side entrance if you ask them. And the lines tend to be a lot less there. Yeah. That's where a lot of the vendors were coming in, but there was also like they were letting, you know, just regular, you know, visitors or whatever you want to call it come yeah. in. Yeah. Um, so I don't think you can walk that way. So if you don't get a golf yeah, cart, like they were turning of, people around. Yeah. Sometimes they were letting them in. Sometimes yeah. they were turning them around. So park, try to get one of those golf cart taxis and say you want to go to the side entrance, see if they'll take you around that way. Yeah. Um, but, but also you just want to get there earlier because I remember last year we were there as a vendor. So we got in before the doors open and like when they first opened the doors, you know, obviously people are coming in, but there's still just like so many less people in there. You can, if you're, if you're right at the front, you can really, and you know, like, Hey, I want to look at these units. You can get in there when there's not crowd 20 people in one RV. Um, and you know, you can really knock out a lot in the first like hour of the show. If you're there when it opens. It's, and then what you do is like spend a couple hours too in the morning before it gets hot. And then maybe in the middle of the day, you can, you know, leave and get a bite to eat or yeah. they have classes that they have like RV classes and, and talks and stuff in the giant center that you can do when it's hot. You can get a little break in the yep. AC. Um, so yeah, definitely you don't, I wouldn't recommend coming in the middle of the day when it's the hottest to walk around and go into the RVs because it's gonna be the worst time. Okay, up next, we're gonna break into the tips for somebody who's like there to purchase. Now, really quick before we do that, we are gonna have a video. The, the Hershey Show, I can admit, is very, very complicated and confusing, even for me, the way they broke it up because it's not like a normal show. It's a manufacturer show, not a dealer show. So probably day one of the show, we're gonna have a map and we're gonna go through and break everything down on which brands are where um, and classified under each manufacturer. So make sure to tune in for that. Um, again, hit the little notification bell because that will be a very important video, I think, mm -hmm. um, so that you don't waste your time because it's a huge show yeah. and it could be a lot of walking. And we're going to do, I don't know if you said, we're going to do that on the first day yeah. of the show. So if you're trying to come, that will probably, we might not have it out for you, like if you're coming Wednesday, the first right. day, but we'll be getting that out Wednesday night. Yeah. Um, and that way we can actually drive around and show you like really where everything is yep. because you kind of don't know all the little individual you brands yeah. until you really get there. So it's hard for us to kind of give you that insight into we yeah. get there too and show you all that. Yep. Cool. So first is going to be for, again, this is now breaking it down for buyers is to really pick your unit or units and stick to it. Again, everybody's goals are different, but you may have it narrowed down between, or you may e even easier. You may know just like us that you want an Alliance Avenue 32 RLS, pick that unit, stick to it. And again, like Jen said earlier, don't get shiny object syndrome. Even if it's a teardrop, you know you're not going, gonna want. Because every time you do that, it just wears you down a little bit. Save that for the end. Um, go in there with the focus because you'll be surprised how long of a day it ends up being. Yeah. Even though it, it shouldn't be, it's just, it's you know. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of people, a lot of things to do. <laughs> yeah. So if that's your goal, go check out that Alliance Avenue again. Um, peek at it, make sure it's everything you wanted, see what changes they made for 2023, and then um, sit down and work it out. If you're trying to decide between the Alliance Avenue, um, the Keystone Arcadia, and the Grand Design Reflection, totally fine. Again, just stick with those three units. You know what I mean? Yeah. Go in there, Grand Design is first, I think Keystone's next, and then I think Alliance is at the end. Hit those boom, 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 and decide what you like best, stick to again just stick to that plan and and follow through with that till the end yeah and i promise it'll pay off and mm -hmm. save you so many headaches and so much exhaustion really yeah and it'll also give you if you're if you're you know planning for a couple of days of the show doing that first thing and being really focused about it will give you a lot of time um to discuss you know once you start talking about pricing and all that stuff it gives you like time to work on yep. all that which we're about to get into that exactly so. So that kind of leads into the next step, which is once you find that unit and you're ready to purchase, what is a fair price, right? And it is so hard in this, especially in this market, it's hard always um, because every unit is different. One thing I can say is before you do anything, come see us at our tent. Um, you want to mark on the screen where we're going to be? Yeah, I'll put I'll put okay. a map right up here with a little dot. I think we're in the same place as last we year, are. right? Yep. So if you came and saw us last year at the show, we're in that same spot. 
Um, but we'll have it there so that you guys can kind yep. of like see. We'll but yeah, definitely <laughs> come by because we're you know we're going to be helping you with with all that, answering questions, yeah. helping you guys figure out where where stuff is and everything. Yeah, and it's going to be a little different for us this year. You know, we're not going to be able to help with like every single brand. It's going to be brand specific depending on what we represent there and everything. But we're still happy to help. Like if you have a quote there, you want to verify, make sure it's a good price. It is easier for us to know brand to brand what is and, and isn't a good price. Um, but another quick tool you can use if you can't come find us and if you're if you're buying and like there's a big line like come grab me you're totally fine to to jump in line because i know this is urgent if you can't get a hold of us or whatever go to download the rv trader app before you go rv trader gives you a rough idea the problem is is if you short sort from highest to lowest price the highest they're going to start with msrp some dealerships do that the lowest they're gonna have some crazy low blowout price, which by the time you get there, they're gonna be like, oh, well there's add on for the slide yeah. toppers and $10,000 in freight and prep and this and that. And you know, a lot of times you end up not with that price, but it kind of gives you an idea. And if nothing else, it gives you a little bit of negotiating power. Like, hey, I see it here. Knowing in the back of your mind, you're not gonna pay that. Of course, that's what they're gonna come back and say as well. But you know, again, it just gives you a little bit of a clearer picture. Um, a lot of times when I see the lowest price on RV Trader, it's like below invoice. So that's how they have to, you know, raise the prices on extras mm -hmm. and freight and prep and all that. Yeah. Um, but you know, use that tool a little bit as well. Okay, so another kind of negotiating tip at the show is don't start talking about price if you are not ready to make a deposit on that unit if you get the right price. Mm -hmm. You know, the that first conversation where you're going back and forth with your salesperson or the sales manager on numbers, that's where you have the most buying power. Yes. As soon as you get the best price, and maybe it's a price that you're happy with, but you're not ready to to say, hey, I'm like take my deposit if you can get it at this price. If you if you don't have if you're not ready to make that decision and hand over that money, you you lose a little you bit lose of power. that buying yeah. power. You know. Um, so you want to come in, you know, do your research first before you start, you know, talking about numbers. Go on, like Will said, go on RV Trader. You know, know like here's what I want to be at, or here's like the max I want to pay. You know, have that number in your head, and know that like, hey, if they get there, I'm ready to pay that deposit. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, like you can use that deposit almost to your advantage to get a better price for them to realize how serious you are yep. as a buyer. Um, when we bought our truck, I remember like when we were negotiating price, you know, we were kind of going back and forth and I finally said, hey, here's my card. You can charge the deposit if you can get it at this price. Go ask your sales manager. And that just shows that you are very, very serious about buying. You're not the, just there kind of looking around, playing games. Like, you know, some people want to come and just like, are just curious what something costs. And, what's the and sales salespeople are wary of that. So if you show how serious you are as a buyer with that deposit, um, they're, you know, the sales manager is going to take their offer to you. Mm -hmm. Everything serious. stops at that point. Yeah. And it, you know, the focus is on you and that deal. Yeah. And the reason people ask like, why can't you just give me the best price? Right. And truthfully, like, I wish it was that easy. Um, and if you just want the best price and you're not that serious, they're just gonna, you know, scribble something down, make some money on the deal. Here you go. You know, just because they don't think you're that serious. Where if you show with that credit card that you're serious, the sales manager is going to go to their boss. They're going to look for every rebate they can. They'll go, they'll work their way up to get you that deal. They'll call the manufacturer, try to get some money. Um, they'll call the banks to see what kind of rebates they're going to do, what kind of interest rates. So, and all that takes time, right? And so if they think you're not serious, they're going to yeah. stay focused on the people who are giving them their credit card to run the deposit if they can hit that number, because they know that they're serious, more likely to get the deal. Yeah. Um, Whereas if you're not willing to, it, truthfully, it's gonna kind of be a blow off. Not to say they won't try. You know, most of the time you just see they don't dig into it as much. They'll still give you a, a you know, a, a good deal usually, but they're not gonna give it, dig into it and give you that mm -hmm. like great deal, the best price they can. Yeah. So I would say like with kind of all that summarized, it's like don't sit down and start talking numbers mm -hmm. with your salesperson until like you are ready to give them that deposit. So it's not a good idea to go in and be like, oh, I'm just gonna get, I'm just gonna get the numbers on this unit and this unit and this unit with no intention of actually like, like committing to one that day. Um, it'd be better if you're, if you're comparing, if you're still comparing units just because of price, I would say probably just look at like what the sale price is of the units at the yep. show, or look at what the average price is an RV trader. Don't compare prices by getting prices from those dealerships right. sitting down, because once you do that and then you walk away that day at the show and you have show no commitment, you know, you're 
like you could probably get that unit for lower, but you're you're less likely to now because you just seemed way exactly you know? exactly yep. So one of the cool things about the show is a lot of these dealerships have multiple locations, right? And the way that it works with the show is whatever dealership is closest to that store typically is who represents that brand if they carry it. So if you have dealership A and they represent Grand Design and they're right there, they're the closest dealership, that's who's gonna represent them at the show. That doesn't mean that dealership B might not have it 100 miles away in the opposite direction or yeah. something. So. Um, and maybe even less, but you know, just as an example. So the cool thing is, is that you can take those numbers, go to another dealership, ask them if they sell that brand, where they sell it, if they have it in stock and work a deal on that. And it's actually a really smart thing to do. Sometimes it can be hard, but it's that is easier if you're shopping two brands. Let's say you're looking at the Grand Design and the Keystone Arcadia, um, the, the reflection in the Arcadia, you're probably talking to two salespeople there. Well, hey, I think we're leaning towards the reflection. Um, you know, just tell the salesperson that, and I bet you they'll pipe up and say, hey, well, at my, you know, Virginia store, I might be able to get you the reflection at a much better deal. Yeah. And it makes that conversation easier, but even if you're looking at one brand, research ahead of time, the dealerships who are gonna be there, and um, approach them and ask them what, you know, where they sell it and, and if they can do a better price. Yeah. Most dealerships that are at the show, when I'm trying to think through, I feel like most dealerships at the show have multiple locations. You most know, of them do, you yeah. Know, maybe not some of the little smaller ones, but most yeah. of the big dealerships that are at the Hershey Show have multiple locations, which means they're much more likely to carry a lot of inventory, even if they don't represent it at the show. So just know that, like, it's just the rules of the show. It's like one dealership gets rights to, to sell that main, to sell Grand Design or yep. to sell Alliance there. That doesn't mean they don't sell all of them at, at across their, their mm -hmm. dealership locations. Exactly. Okay, another little tip is if you start working with a salesperson at the show and you're going there for a couple of days, don't like forget about your salesperson when you go back. That that loyalty, that friendliness with your salesperson is going to go a long way once you start negotiating price. And you know, keep in mind with all this, a lot of times it's the sales manager that's making mm -hmm. decisions on what price they're going to get it for. The salesperson's more of like your liaison. Um, and so, hopefully, not always, yeah. but like a lot of times, lot, yeah. especially now with the RV industry shifting. You know what I yeah. mean? It's getting back to the good salespeople yeah. who really care about the customer. Right. And so, like the 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 better like relationship that you can have. Um, with with your salesperson and the more you show them like hey I you know I understand that you've spent time working with me you, you know the salespeople are there to make money to support their family and just like everyone that goes to work every day and so when you show them that hey like you recognize that they've spent time with you um, and they're trying to get a commission and everything and you understand that and you you understand that kind of loyalty factor um, they're gonna go they're gonna work to represent you and get you the best price possible as much as they can. So just, you know, if you start working with a salesperson, make sure you get their card, remember their name. So when you go back later that day or the next day um, that and you go into that section, you know, don't just start working with another salesperson. Um, I know as salespeople before, like when you see that, it's like, ah, oh, it's like yeah. a stab because you can spend hours with somebody and the next day you see them with someone else and it's just mm -hmm. like, you know, that was hours you spent to, to really make nothing. Yeah. Um, so just remember that. and. It's like it's like anything in life, you know. When you're nicer, when you're nice to that person, it, it, like if you were a salesperson and a customer was being nice to you and you had a good relationship, it's like you want to do the best that you can for that person. Um, so just kind of have that in mind with your salesperson. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great point. And and again, like I was kind of saying earlier, it's like most of the time the salespeople are going to be really good people and they're just there to support the family, especially in the RV industry. Like people always think of like used car salesmen. Most of the salespeople um, that I've ever worked with are like really good people. Yeah. Just be nice to them. They're not there to take advantage of you most of the time. Again, you know, you, you know, a year ago, yeah, it, it was a lot worse because there were so many people, truthfully, who were in the car industry and came in to make a quick buck because there was a lot of money in the RV industry. Yeah. Um, but a lot of them have been weeded out since the market. Not all of them, but they're starting to be weeded out since the market shift. But just find somebody who is nice, who you really connect with, and just be nice to them. Like Jen said, it really, a lot of times it's like, I was truthfully, when I did sales, so much more on the customer side, because yeah. it's like, you make it a good experience for them, you work for them and get them a good deal, you'll get paid because they're gonna end up buying it. Um, you having your sales managers back, 
you know, of course, at the end of the day, they sign the paycheck, yeah. but, um, but the customer, the customer is yeah. really kind and of the one signing the paycheck. If, if they're ha really happy with you as a salesperson, they want to send their friends and their family yep. to you. Um, so a lot of times the salespeople's the goal. goal is like helping the customer and getting the deal done. So yep. a lot of times they're motivated to help you. And a little side note with, with salespeople, if you are going to the show and you know you're not buying, you're really just looking around, and you go into a unit and you have questions, know that, especially at the Hershey show, but at most bigger shows like that, um, they'll have people, representatives from the manufacturer mm -hmm. there too. So Great I would point. say that like, you know, obviously you can ask the salesperson a quick question, but if you have a lot of questions, try to find the person that represents that brand, not an actual dealership salesperson, because the dealership salespeople are, are really there to try to you know make money and get sales. That's the whole reason why they're, they're there away from their families, traveling a lot of times. Um, manufacturer reps, you know, they're they're gonna whether you buy that unit at the show or later, they're gonna be happy that you have interest in their exactly. brand. So they're gonna be a little have a little bit more patience with like trying to answer a lot of your questions about the about the brand and stuff like that. So just a little tip, you know, yeah, just to, just to not kind of like you know waste a salesperson's time if you know that you're not buying. Yep. So typically we had seen that um, the weekend days were busier. Now that's starting to shift, like Jen talked about earlier. Um, we don't know what to expect this year, but either way, I would still, if you're looking to buy, I would still recommend coming early, Wednesday, Thursday, even Friday. And mainly, be not as much to beat the crowd since it seems like that's changing, more because um, it really is, I think, your best time to get your best price because they are, the dealerships are there, they spend a lot of money to get there, the salespeople are all amped up, and everybody's working to get those deals done, mm -hmm. and they want to get started on the right foot. Yeah, honestly. the energy is high at the beginning yeah. of the show. At the end of the show, everyone's getting <laughs> tired. Yeah. Um, so you want to play to that excitement. Yep, and you know, hey, let them know you want to be the first deal to show, or yeah. whatever it is, you know, you want to buy on the first day, and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, really feeding off of their energy will, will be great, and um, Again, those sales managers, they want to get the deals done and they're going to be quick to do that in the beginning mm -hmm. um, to get just to get that ball rolling and, and to get, get the show off right. And also to your advantage, because if you think you're going to buy, but you know that you you don't know exactly what unit um, you want to give yourself like a couple of days to have time to like mm -hmm. get there, you know, compare it, go in all the units that you're you're choosing between. Um, have time to really like think about which one you want, have time to, to get negotiate. So it's also to give you some buffer room exactly. to do all of that. Now, obviously, if you know exactly what you want and you're just coming to get that price, um, you could probably come in first thing in the morning Wednesday and, and probably get that yeah. done. Yeah. But you know, if you know that you need a little bit more time, if you can start on Wednesday and knowing that like, hey, this will get it to where we can put a deposit on, on it on Friday, you know, you give yourself that time to do that. Yeah, and that 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 is a great point and also kind of leads into like how many days to plan for. And I kind of say plan for a minimum of two days if you're there to buy. But really what I mean by that is just plan for extra time. Like there's so many people who are like, I already know what I want, I'm gonna go in and buy. And then by the end of day one, they're getting frustrated because it's not happening and they're not getting the deal they wanted. So plan for that second day. You know what I mean? Yeah. To go in there, sleep on it, think through things, do some more research, come back the next morning and try to knock it out. Yeah. Um, if you if you think you need two days, one day is to look, the next day is to finalize a deal, plan for that third day. If nothing else, take a day and enjoy it at Hershey Park. <laughs> yeah, the Hershey Park, there's like land castles right there. Yeah. There's some cute things to do in the area. So, yeah. and also too, like you, you know, you might need a, uh, if you're if you're coming as a, you know with your spouse or your family it's like maybe you just want to give yourself a day like you went and looked at your mm -hmm. options and just give yourself a day away from the show to really like absorb think, it, absorb yeah. it and really just to make a, a informed decision about what you want so yeah like i guess the moral of it is give yourself some buffer time exactly and the last point that we're going to talk about is the inventory obviously inventory is getting a lot better and again this kind of comes back to your goals like and do you need something right away? You'll practically want to drive out of the show with it. Um, then definitely be there Wednesday. Definitely be ready to go. Um, but at the same time, in past shows, units were, they had one in the show. And if you didn't buy that one, it was six months. It's not going to be like that again this year. So if you have, you know, there's probably going to be more back at the dealership lots so that they can pull 
from another location or something. But just remember that um, the earlier you get there, it is gonna be first come first serve. You're gonna have more options. Um, and if you don't have a time crunch, you really just wanna order it now for next spring, then you're great, come whenever. Yeah. Um, but you know, again, kind of comes down to those goals. If you yep. want it right away, make sure to get there first thing. Yep. All right guys, well that wraps up all of our kind of tips for getting, getting ready, planning for the Hershey Show so that you can maximize your time there, um, whether you're looking, just looking and researching or you're planning to buy. So we hope this video was helpful. Again, make sure to hit the subscribe button and, and the like button if you enjoyed this video. And also, if you are coming to the Hershey show um, and you have any other tips that we maybe didn't mention mm -hmm. or have any other questions for us too um, please leave them down in the comments below we may you know if there's if there's enough questions we might make another video about getting ready for the Hershey show so definitely leave those in the comments below and uh, we will see you on Sunday for our exciting vlog to wherever we're at right now <laughs> bye guys see ya